Hello and welcome to this new story time. On the first night of February 1959, nine sky hikers died mysteriously in the mountains of what is now in Russia. The night of the incident, the group had set up camp on a slope, enjoyed dinner and prepared for sleep. But something went catastrophically wrong because the group never returned. Hello and welcome to this new episode. As I promised, I'll be coming with a new story time for season 2, so here it is. Today we will be discussing about the mysterious unexplained thing which took place at the Yatslov Pass. On February 26, searchers found the hikers' abandoned tent which had been ripped open from the inside. Surrounding the area were footprints left by the group, some wearing socks, some wearing a single shoe, some barefoot, all of which continued to edge of a nearby wood. That's where the first two bodies were found, shoeless and wearing only underwear. The scene bore marks of death by hypothermia, but as medical examiners inventoried the bodies, as well as the other seven that were discovered over the months that followed, hypothermia no longer made sense. In fact, the evidence made no sense at all. One body had evidence of a blunt force trauma consistent with a brutal assault. Another had third degree burns. One had been vomiting blood, one was missing a tongue, and some of their clothing was found to be radioactive. Theories floated including KGB interference, drug overdose, UFO, gravity, anomalies, and the Russian version of the Yeti. Recently, a documentary filmmaker presented a theory involving a terrifying but real phenomenon called infrasound, in which the wind interacts with the topography to create a barely audible hum that can nevertheless include powerful feelings of nausea, panic dread, chills, nervousness, raised heartbeat rate and breathing difficulties. The only consensus remains that whatever happened involved an overwhelming and possibly an inhuman Just to give you a brief insight into this case, so there was an event in which nine Russian hikers died in the northern Ural Mountains between 1st and 2nd February 1959 in uncertain circumstances. The experienced trekking group from the Ural Polytechnical Institute, which was led by Igor Zatlov, had established a camp on the eastern slopes of the Kolat Siakl. During the night, something caused them to cut their way out of their tent and flee the campsite while inadequately dressed for the heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperature. After the group's bodies were discovered, an investigation by Soviet authorities determined that six had died from hypothermia while the other three had been killed by physical trauma. One victim had major skull damage. Two had severe chest trauma and other had a small crack in the skull. Four of the bodies were found lying in running water in a creek and three of these had soft tissue damage of the head and face. Two of the bodies were missing their eyes, one was missing its tongue and the one was missing its eyebrows. The investigation concluded that a compelling natural force had caused the death. Numerous theories have been put forward to account for the unexplained death and related to avalanche, winds, infrastructure, and other. Russia opened a new investigation into the incident in 2019, and its conclusion were presented in July 2020 that an avalanche had led to the death. Survivors of the avalanche had been forced to suddenly leave their camp in low visibility condition with inadequate clothing and had died of hypothermia. Andrei, deputy head of the regional prosecutor's office, said it was a heroic struggle. There was no panic, but they had no chance to save themselves under the circumstances. A mountain pass in the area had later been named Datlov Pass in memory of the group. In many languages, the incident is now referred to as the Datlov Pass incident. So, when we move into the search and discovery part, it always says that before leaving, Datlov had agreed he would send a telegram 
to the sports club as soon as the group returned to Versailles. It was expected that this would happen no later than 12 February, but Dadloff had told Uden before he departed from the group that he expected it to be longer. When the 12th passed and no message had been received, there was no immediate reaction as delays of a few days were common with such expedition. On 20 Feb, the travelers' relatives demanded a rescue operation and the head of the institute sent the first rescue groups consisting of volunteer students and teachers. Later, the army and the militia forces became involved with planes and helicopters ordered to join the operation. On the 26th of Feb, the searchers found the group's abandoned and badly damaged tent on the Kolat Siakal. After 500 meters, these tracks were covered with snow and at the forest ditch under a Siberian pine, the searchers found the visible remain of a small fire. Then finding the remain four travelers took more than two months. They were finally found on 4th of May under four meters of snow in a ravine 75 meters further into the woods from the pine tree. More into the investigation, a legal inquest started immediately after the first five bodies were found. A medical examination found no injuries that might have led to their death and it was concluded that they all died because of hypothermia. An examination of the bodies found in May shifted the narrative of the incident. Three of the hikers had fatal injuries. All four bodies found at the bottom of the creek in a running stream had soft tissue damage to the head and face. There was initial speculation that the indigenous Mansi people, reindeer herders local to the area, had attacked and murdered the group for encroaching upon their lands. Several Mansi were interrogated but the investigation indicated that the nature of the deaths did not support this hypothesis. Only the hikers' footprints were visible and they showed no sign of hand-to-hand -hand struggle. Although the temperature was very low, around minus 25 to minus 30 degrees C with a storm blowing, the dead were only partially dressed. So the journalists reporting on the available parts of the inquest files claim that it states six of the group members died of hypothermia and three of fatal injuries. Some level of radiation were found on one victim's clothing. Release documents contain no information about the condition of the sky's internal organ. There were no survivors. In 1997, it was revealed that the negatives from the camera were kept in the private archive of one of the investigators. On April 2019, sorry, it was April 2018, Zolotrev's remains were exhumed on the initiative of journalist of the Russian tabloid newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravada. Contradictory results were obtained. One of the experts said that the character of the injuries resembled a person knocked down by the car and the DNA analysis did not reveal any similarity to the DNA of living relatives. So, the aftermath, such as the Anatoly Gushchin, summarized his research in the book The Price of State Secrets is Nine Lives. Some researchers criticized the work for its concentration on the speculative theory of a Soviet secret weapon experiment. So I would just end by saying this was the unsolved mystery of the death club pass incident. I came and like I got to know about this incident a few months back and I loved it a lot so I discussed about it. I hope you liked it. Maybe I could do more of a brief session if I get more information about this. But till now this will be it. Thank you so much for hearing.